Jay Horowitz here with a very special edition of the Amazing Mets Alumni Life Podcast. Todd Zeal, Al Leiter, John Franco. Uh, Engine 55, uh, 21 years after 9-11. What does it mean to be sitting here with a firehouse, the uniforms behind you? You know, reflect a little bit. Todd, I'll start with you. Uh, well, look, it never gets old, Jay. And uh, first of all, thank you for continuing to, um, you know, push this as an initiative and something that's important to us, obviously. but. I think important from the Mets standpoint too, but um, we love coming and seeing the guys. A lot of great stories that we hear the inspiration for why they became firefighters. It obviously reflect back on what that time was like uh, when we were playing in this city and experienced 9-11. And I think, um, you know, speaking for myself, but probably for a lot of the guys that were around, uh, that was the most important part of our baseball career. Baseball um, was, a vehicle for us to be able to have an experience that transcended baseball. So um, it's still very important for me, at least personally, to try to find a way to be involved. Mr. Al? What did you ask again? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Um, all right, so you're awesome. And what you've done uh, via Through the Mets and all of the charity uh, initiatives that made it easy for us to go out in the community and do the things that we do, ex- extra uh, that's outside of a baseball player, um, really, really appreciative of what you've done. So well, I'll, I'll dovetail off the top. Let me stop you for a second. I've been Wait, blessed. Wait, Jay, you just interrupt. I didn't, I didn't interrupt you. I, but 42 years I've been here. I won a World Series. Well, I didn't win a World Series. I got a ring. But for me, being a part of the 2001 team was the highlight of my career. Because of what you guys did, we gave back as a group. So it wasn't... I but was, you made it easy. Well, Jay. I know, but I had easy guys to work with. And starting with Johnny, so I'm glad you. I'm glad Johnny's uh, going to follow here. But I, I think it's important because, and I, and I know we've done these interviews for right 21 years. 21 now. years. Um, we were so close to not only just being in New York as a New York Met and what happened that day, as a lot of other people were, but as a result of what took place at Shea Stadium, the staging area, and other things that were part of the rescue and and the rebuild right so because it was so close i felt it was such an easy thing for us to do something to give back and by continuing that now for 21 years we were there at ground zero what days after uh when it happened uh just talking to a few of the firefighters you know it felt a little awkward initially because i felt like we were in the way but we knew what it meant to, to the guys, so it was important. But we have to keep it, we have to keep this alive. Talking to a few of the firefighters that, are, that were eight, 10, 11 years old uh, during 9-11, like for them to understand uh, what it meant and to keep the legacy of these heroes on forever. And, I, and, I th- and I'm not, those aren't just words. I, like I really mean that. So when you ask, you know, for me to come by and I'm local and I know Todd's with SMY and Johnny's New York in New York, like that's it's such an easy yes to 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 want to be part of something that should never be forgotten Jonathan well just to piggyback off of them you know what you've done over the last 20 years 21 years to to keep us going keep us going to firehouse here firehouse there uh dinners whatever it is uh we enjoy doing it we want to do it and we will continue to do it as long as you know you know i was born and raised here so this was when this uh attack hit it hit home for me so whatever I can do to help, I try to do it. But uh, you know, when you have teammates like this and the other guys, the whole other, the whole organization came together and, and did what we had to do. We put a small bandaid on a big wound for a little while to make them forget to watch a ball game. But uh, we enjoy doing it and we enjoy coming out and, and seeing a lot of the firefighters who are Met fans now, a lot of them who are kids uh, and now they're firefighters. So it's great to see the tradition and it's great to see the organization keep carrying on year after year. You say something? Uh, and, and I would like to see it not just for the guys that were there, us and you, but I'd like to see it with this to be a forever thing with present day, whether it's Mets or the Yankees or the, or the Rangers or whoever, whoever it is, to inspire and to tell the story, right? Because that's the only way that you keep the legacy alive. So. I think it's important that even the present day celebrity is still part of this because that's what really keeps it going and keeps the 
keeps it in the forefront, at least with respect to honoring these. these you guys remember guys. the first firehouse we visited? It was right next to Ground Zero. Yeah. I think it was knocked down. It was nothing. No, was there. it was at, uh, I think, Ladder 10, right? Ladder 10. Yeah, we, I think we were, it was House 10, Ladder 10. Ladder that 10, was, uh, 10 yeah. Liberty Street, I think it was there, right? Yeah, I'm there every day because the SNY Studios, I mean, I'm fortunate. I, I live a block from uh, the towers, and SNY is on the 50th floor of Four World Trade. So I look down at the pools every day, and I walk by Ladder 10 on the way into the um, into the studio every day. And I remember going on the roof. Remember we could go, we went on the roof of there, and, and we could look down into, and you could feel the heat and see the steam, and just um, something that I'll never forget. And just the the fact that we were talking about that, we felt like, oh my gosh, this is going to be invasive. Why are we doing this now? We this may be too soon. And then as soon as some of the guys saw the hats we, we brought and some of the things that we just reminded them of something different than they had been focusing on for the last, you know, 24 hours a day for the last five days. Um, we were like, okay, this is, this is okay. And I'll never forget going on the roof of Ladder 10 though. Well, what, one of the things I'm most proud of is when, when we started to wear the hats yeah. and there was some pressure not to wear it the rest of the year. And I think, um, we, we said screw it basically right well, basically it? yeah basically we decided to wear the hats to represent the, all the you know the police firemen uh, and the commissioner's office and Todd was our player rep and got a letter from the saying that we couldn't wear the hats and we basically tell him to screw you come down and take it off our heads and uh, and we wound up wearing it the rest of the season I remember I got a letter from I think the court officers lost four people probably memories man I got a letter from my wife and she was so thrilled yeah. that she saw the court office is represented on the field, and, and that was something you never forget. That kind of stuff, you know. And, uh, I, I mean, I was swapping. I, I was switching them out because I, I mean, not to be uh, totally exclusive to FDNY, but realizing after the the uh, the positive comments that were made, really pointing to us wearing those hats. Yeah. You know, they're at home and they're seeing, uh, you know, us not wearing Mets hats. And then what you just said, Jay, now the plethora of other agencies that wanted us to do the same thing. Right. So I remember on some of the starts, because, you know, we could pick yeah. whatever, right? So somebody would give and they would have a sticker of, uh, you know, someone who was lost on it. And just to wear it was, I knew that was inspiring to somebody. One thing was uh, the problem, when we went to Ground Zero five, six, seven times, we never once went down there with cameras. No. We, we never once, it was all... Just to do the right thing, to do the right thing. Absolutely. You know, we never try to get PR out of it or anything out of it. We just went down there. Basically went down there to thank the firefighters That's right. and all the rescue workers to thank them for the job and the, the, the determination that they were just looking for one survivor. And uh, just the determination on their face uh, made our job easier because we're determined to win. But the, the look on their faces when they were down there and looking and guys down there 24, 48, 72 hours and not wanting to go home. That's, uh, that meant a lot to us to go down there and see that. You know, remember too about the truck, you know, I mean, Bobby V, you know, Bobby V, his best friend was a jumper, he killed himself. And he was kind of our leader, which, and he, Bobby V, spurred everybody on. We, we, lo we, we would practice in the morning, load the truck in the afternoon, the chase day, it was a recovery area. Right. And I really, I think it was everybody, Vance Wilson, Joe McEwen, Armando Benitez, Alfonso. 25 guys loaded the truck, nobody bitched about anything. Well, that's a, a tribute to our team. We had a close team. Everybody got along with everybody, and we knew it was the right thing to do. We knew it was the right thing to do. That, yeah, yeah, there was no coaxing to go along. I mean, it was just, just, hey, this is what we're going to do after practice. Everybody's like, okay, we're, we're here until we're done. Yeah. So we had to be out there three, four, five hours. And that's what we did. Actually, and I, and I don't know about you guys, but like you, you made it a point to, for it to not be gratuitous to us and the Mets and, and what we right. were doing out front. And I, I, I know talking to a few of, of, of the guys was like, we didn't want that. Like the last thing I really, it, it was so important to really just be there for the families, for the guys and, and just support. So to have, you know, all the media like I, I felt like that was that was so wrong and I know you did too right because no you question. brought it up and uh, I think it, I think it also showed from where we were as hallowed ground as it was that we weren't doing it for you know something other than just wanting to we're not doing it for PR yeah no that I I, I actually I, I don't like that I think some of the most 
you know, I, I guess vivid memories that I have, or at least experiences I have, are going like to the Javits Center, to uh, visiting, just sitting with families that were, um, you know, devastated. I, there was no, there was nothing except just us having an opportunity to sit there and talk and try to feel some of the pain and maybe talk baseball for a few minutes. I can totally remember a, a guy who was a career firefighter who had a son that was a firefighter and another son that was an NYPD and they were both off when the towers were struck. They called each other and met at the base of the building, both went up and perished. And it just, I, I'll just, you know, those are the kind of things that I just were so impactful at the time, makes you want to continue to try to find a way to be involved. Do you not remember when we went to Pittsburgh the first when we played there? I think your birthday the 17th, right? Yes. Yeah. There was a big, there were like 3,000 people signed the yeah. thing right in front of our locker room. Yeah. You know, yeah. Do you remember that, the, the, uh, the, uh, the poster right in front yes, of our locker room? Yeah, that, I was telling a couple of the firefighters when we went back on the road to Pittsburgh, Atlanta, I mean, we got standing ovations. We were behind you, New York. Uh, you know, the whole country came together. It bonded everyone. And I think that's what uh, was important to us that not just New York, but the whole country was behind us and trying to help. You know, Mike's home run was great, but the people don't, it was a great thing, the really nice to see, but we did so, so much behind the scenes other than that, which not gets overlooked, but I think it's important, you know, the visits to Ground Zero to the hospitals, the police station, to the fire station. To me, that's the most important stuff that we did as an organization. No? Right. Well, absolutely. And it was easy to identify as to whether we were doing something that was right it was because of the affirmation we got back from the people that were affected. They were, it was so obvious of what we meant. Not just the Mets, but just, just people who were supportive of the people that were lost. I do think that the, um, and we, got, we probably all agree on this, is that the home run was kind of the exclamation point. It made that night feel like okay, this is why we were here. This made it okay to come back because I think a lot of us were still wondering, okay, is it the right time to come to the stadium? There's so much security. Are people going to show up? Is there, you know, all the things that were going through our heads and then against our rivals, I think the, the sort of the spontaneous after the anthem when we walked across and, and met up with the Braves who were our, like our foes. That hug was just, pretty and, good. And, yeah, and just recognized we that hated hey, the Braves. this is something. <laughs> this they is hated us. They hated us. <laughs> that, was, that was real. That was <laughs> he, even Cox Chipper. Yeah, Bobby even Powell Chipper. The yeah. on the field was unbelievable. Uh, but that, I remember, I remember Liza Minnelli doing the seventh in the New York, New York, and I, the place mm. coming alive. And then Mike's home run was just kind of the exclamation point to make us all feel like, you know what, this was meant to be. This is why we were here. And yeah. Steve Carsey, a Queens native, is nice enough yeah. to serve up the pitch. To serve it up, yeah. <laughs> to serve and up Jason Marquis, too, right? Jason yeah, Marquis Jason in Marquis New York. We had, yeah, we had all New York covered that night. By yeah. the way, there was no serving up because he's still pissed to this day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said uh, he strike three. Like that, strike yeah. three on Mike. Remember, he yeah. thought that was a strike. For, for me, what, 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 I don't remember the bus ride back from Pittsburgh. We, you know, we stayed in a hotel. We were next to a federal building. We had to evacuate the building. We had a trip back, and remember, we were over the bridge. I mean, such a direction is bad. I think Utah said, look to the right, and there were yeah. no towers. No tower. Yeah, we were coming across the GW, and it was the middle of the night, and um, I think we were having to be escorted across, and we were going, obviously going slower. We came to a stop. I don't know what it was, but there was absolute dead silence on, on mm -hmm. the, the bus as we looked down and just saw really there was lights because of what was going on, but the smoke, and we could smell it all the way uptown, and I just remember that, and then I know that there was guys that, that was a very emotional moment. You didn't real, even realize what it was gonna be like until you're there looking down and the towers are gone. That was, uh, I was poignant. And uh, sure. there was silence all the way to the it stadium. It was, it was crazy. Nobody said nothing from the GW to the stadium. It was like, you know, a little chit chat, but nothing like it was. It was just, this is, you know, wow, well, we're seeing it firsthand. Well, let me see this, guys. Again, I've been 42 years, All-Star Games, World Series. For me, this team is my, my highlight. You can put something on my, my gravestone, would be a member of the 2001 Mets baseball team. Because what we did is never going to be forgotten. Yeah. I think everybody, you know, the guys here helped the city heal, and I'm really proud to be a part of that. Well, thank you. We're happy that you, you keep this tradition going yeah. on, and uh, hopefully it'll go on for another 20 years, 30 years. Uh, like I said earlier, we put a small Band-Aid on a big wound the night that we played, but we'll never forget what happened, and uh, I hope the current players and, uh, yep. and uh, 
people in New York and the younger generations that will never forget the, the, what the firefighters and the, 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 the rescue workers did uh, that day while they were running up, people were running out. Right. So it was it's, great. It's, it's a different kind of thing being in a firehouse with seeing these, the uniforms behind and really what they had to do to run up and the heavy equipment. It's a, a special kind of person to be a fireman. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. I'm, I'm here with Mike Jello, Assistant Borough Chief of Manhattan. Uh, Mike, what does it mean to you when the Mets keep supporting the fire department they have through the years? Uh, I'll tell you, tw uh, 20, Jay, 21 years later, to see you, you guys come out and continue to support the FDNY the way they do, the Mets do, other sports outfits do, it means so much to us as a department to continue to have your support. I, you know, I was fortunate enough to be with the Mets since, uh, you know, a long time, and this is a special group of guys, the guys that are here today, you know, Todd Zeal, Al Leiter, and John Frank, and when they get it, what I mean, they get what happened in 9-11, and they don't forget, I mean, I was, you know, I won some winning World Series with the Mets, for me, the highlight for me is working with this 2001 team who, who really got what it meant to, what, what this was about. Yeah, that meant a lot to all of us that year to see what went on. And uh, like I said, the, the continued support from the Mets organization means a lot to the FDNY. It does. It helps us get through these tough times. And you, at 9 11, you served in Brooklyn. What do you remember about that day? Yeah, I, I, was a, a, I had about 10 years on the job. I was a lieutenant assigned to Brooklyn. Uh, and uh, it affected us as a department. Regardless of where you worked throughout the city on that day or the days after, you were at the site. That's just the way it was. It, it didn't matter where you were assigned, you were at the World Trade Center searching for our lost people. Do you, do you find through the years, let me say it in a nice way, that what makes me proud of my guys, our guys haven't forgotten. Do you find that it's 21 years that it dulls some people a little bit? Man, I'm not saying it's the right way. You know, I'm trying to say that I understand exactly what you're saying, and, and we can't change the history of what happened that day. And, and as senior firefighters and fire officers, we need to continually educate our young people, people that were uh, sometimes in grammar school or even younger at that time, on the events of that day and, and the heroic efforts of our members, and keep that tradition, for lack of a better word, alive to learn from what happened that day. This house, Engine 55, lost five people. Um, did the family still come back uh, after all these years? Yes, yes. Uh, every year on 9-11, each firehouse that lost members, which was an abundance of them, have a different way of, of ceremoniously handling that day. Many times, the, the loved ones like to come to the firehouse uh, and and uh, be with the other rest of the crew. Other times they meet out. You know, it's it's one of those days wh where uh, each unit that lost people have a little different uh, way of going about it. I happen to that morning try to visit as many firehouses as I can each year that lost people. And many times I've seen the family members in those house and, uh, houses that day and were able to converse with them. Mike, I appreciate your time. What you the Mets will never forget. And I'm really blessed to be around a lot of group of guys who'll never forget. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Jack. Thanks, man.